Yes, I'm here. Thank you so much. Can we start a body scan on the body, please, and see what's happening for her? Yes, we can. She has quite a few rashes right now. She's been, uh, the, she has been reacting to the masks that are an unfortunate part of her life right now, but we are going to do some healing for her to, with regards to that because she's been itching and scratching quite a bit. What's actually going on there with the masks? Why is she reacting to them now? Uh, they've got different ones. So they had um, different ones with less chemicals on them, but they're now sending thicker masks with more chemicals. So a little bit more for us to, um, you know, work on uh, getting the toxins out of her system. So uh, we will give her a little bit more protection so that they won't bother her that much in the future. Is she able to talk to her employers and tell them that this is happening to her? Yeah, she has already actually. So they have already worked on getting her a different, uh, another product. The problem is, is that they're, uh, the province is giving them to them for free because they want everyone to be using these um, bad masks because they're making people, uh, they're making people sicker and upping the COVID numbers. So they're trying to, uh, uh, because not a lot of people are getting sick with the flu anymore. They're trying to make the numbers a little bit higher with any other way that they can. Oh, I see. And so does this have anything to do with the latest lockdown for Canada? Yes, it does. Well, Canada is one of the countries uh, that um, the leaders really, uh, well, they're, they're, they're trying to still um, go along with this uh, whole COVID scheme. And it, it is part of the bigger plan. So we don't want anyone in Canada to like worry. The lockdowns are purposeful. And we've told you that before because we feel like there's uh, a lot of people uh, in Canada in particular that aren't, uh, aren't doing their inner work and we want to uh, keep, you know, give people no other choice really. We need them to be uh, home with little other to distract them. Oh, I see. And so is there any other reason why this country is experiencing these lockdowns? Yes, well, we're also trying to, it, they are kind of like, um, the testing ground's not really the right word, but. Uh, they're just kind of trying to show a lot of the other countries in the world um, the you know, the what could happen, uh, you know, so that maybe other people will be more grateful for uh, what they have. And um, in Canada, like they don't really have anything. They don't have anything to worry about. Everything will be fine. We are taking care of the situation. We are monitoring it, but uh, they are going to have to be a little bit more uh, locked down even yet than they are now. It reminds me of this session that uh, I've had with a few other clients talking about um, an army that's not Canadian that is on the border. What is happening there? Can you update me with that? Yeah, there is a, um, uh, the, the leader of Canada, Justin Trudeau, does have um, a deal with Joe Biden and with um, uh, the leader of China. Um, Amy can't come up with that name. <laughs> we, uh, we, yeah, they are all working together and they have troops in, they are pushing Canada towards a communist uh, regime and all the people can kind of see that. And it is really just ex extreme measures uh, trying to wake up, uh, wake up a lot of people. They're trying to wake up the whole world using, uh, you know, this one country as a, as a sort of um, example of uh, what could happen if people don't uh, want to wake up, even though you know that that will not happen regardless. I see. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else you want to tell me about that country? Yeah, well, Amy, Amy knows not to worry, and she has her faith, and uh, we want everyone else that's listening to to know that, yes, it might get a little bit harder, but it will. There will be some other countries in the world that will be seeing further lockdowns as well uh, coming in the next few weeks. Um, they are just really uh, pushing this uh, other, this UK variant of the covid and it's because they don't have any people with the real COVID because uh, the flu and the uh, colds are dying down now. So people aren't getting sick. So they're trying to, uh, you know, push this other agenda to uh, keep people locked down even further. Oh, I see. Do you get a sense of any other countries, uh, what they would be? Um, there would be, uh, <clears throat> the U.S. will probably, there will probably be a few more lockdowns in the States. We're not sure 
as to where there's a lot going on there. Um, there will be, <clears throat> there will be, um, there is some, not on the, not on the topic of the COVID, but there are natural disasters coming uh, for a lot of countries as well. And I think a lot of people will get locked down uh, as a result of those as well. What sort of natural disasters would occur for people to be locked down? Well, there will be, um, there will be volcanoes. I think uh, people have already been uh, seeing that around. Amy was looking earlier today. There will be uh, a volcano in um, uh, Yellowstone uh, National Park, and there will be uh, earthquakes and probably some extreme, like out of the normal weather as well. I see, and you see this occurring when? I would, we think it will occur uh, before May. Okay, interesting. And uh, what else do you have to say about these volcanoes? Is this uh, a natural occurrence? Uh, it is, but um, but again, it's it's all to do with uh, Gaia and her wanting to leave, um, leave the vessel, wanting to move to the new Earth. So, uh, she, as she is uh, pulling out of the planet, pulling her uh, soul out of the planet, there will be um, more things going on uh, in the world. The world is going to kind of uh, have a little bit of chaos going on. Oh, interesting. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to tell me about different parts of the world um, which we should be looking out for? Well, we can't say too, too much, but there is always the dam. <laughs> we, that, that is going to go anytime. And uh, there's also going to be, uh, there will be stuff happening all over the world, but we don't necessarily uh, want to say the specifics because we just do want people to concentrate on the inner work. All the people that are listening to your sessions have nothing, nothing to worry about. They are all protected and they will all be fine. Uh, but there are people who have uh, picked exit points coming up here and they will be, uh, they will be leaving. There will be mass deaths uh, in some of these places. Lots of people leaving and uh, it'll be lightning, uh, lightning the amount of souls on the planet. So it'll be easier for us to shift you. Mm, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And we trust that um, since there is everyone has their own spiritual teams, they will be guided and supported in the very best way possible for them to finish this life experience to be able to move forward to their next. They yes, they will be. And we also I uh, just want you to know that we need uh, we need the army to uh, kind of roll out all over. Uh, they are going to be declaring martial law at some point in the U.S. and probably Canada and some other countries as well. Um, and that will be just because of the disasters. And it is just, again, uh, a way to just kind of keep people safe and out of the way. And they uh, will eventually move to um, getting uh, Biden out of power. Like, uh, he's already out of power, but, you know, just in the public eye. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. And in terms of people still waiting for financial resets, um, is this still going to occur before we shift from your perspective or what can you tell me? We still do see that there is a big possibility for it to occur before. There is a, there is a small chance that it won't, but uh, we still would like it to occur. It is all ready to go. They are just waiting for the right moment to put it out, but there is still a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that uh, is causing um, is causing it to be a little bit delayed. Mm. Some people seem to have lost complete faith in any of the information they have been receiving and learning and growing from uh, because of these delays. Um, I guess it's all purposeful and as they sink back down into 3D. Yes, yes. We understand that people are losing faith and it is unfortunate, but we really want them to get back on faith um, I think it was said in a previous session that you had uh, not that long ago that, you know, impatience, um, impatience is people, um, you know, just wanting to jump forward and not uh, do the inner work before they go. And they need to um, just take this time and know that they do still have work. There's, there's just about no one that has um, absolutely no inner work left. There's always something uh, a little something that can be worked on. And uh, the people that are ready to go, 
can be helping others uh, to get to the point where they're ready to go. Because we really want everyone to be able to complete as much of their inner work as possible so that they can, you know, either A, get onto the faster uh, ships and be there to help people on New Earth or B, um, you know, so that they won't have to do it when they get to New Earth. They'll, they'll already have it done. They'll already be way ahead of the game. Mm, very motivational. Thank you. And grateful you to remind everyone that we all have inner work and that this will be an ongoing process. And the more we re take responsibility of empowering ourselves, uh, I think that will be a great lesson and an advantage point for all to remember and to apply. Yes, yes, we've been uh, kind of monkeying around with the energy of the planet as well. Uh, so it has been going up and down and that's just for various people, uh, for the high vibrational people to kind of be forced to deal with some of their things that they maybe think they've already dealt with. And, you know, uh, when it is um, low, it's giving those other people a break from the 5D, the lower the, the lower vibrational people. So uh, we're trying to get as many people on the planet to uh, do their inner work as possible so that we can have the planet be, you know, as ready to go as possible at the moment that we're ready to shift you monkeying around with the energy you don't say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 even uh even amy sitting here she's laughing because she's been feeling it really uh hard the last few days have been quite low so we understand it might have been quite difficult for all of you and lots of conflicts coming up for people the conflicts my goodness yes it seems like there is uh everyone i know is dealing with some conflict and they're facing it and they're taking it head on and they're uh, being responsible for their reactions which is tremendous um they're learning and growing and knowing that it is the most appropriate way not uh not avoiding the conflict how we all love to do and deal with things in the past where we're growing yes everyone Everyone, no one really likes conflict. There are a few people that do, but they probably have other problems. So anyway, most of the people don't love it, but you know, they are, everyone is facing it. We're really, really proud of uh, of the work that everyone is doing. It's not going unnoticed. And uh, we just want you to, yeah, keep going, dig dig deep within. And, um, and you know, just if you face the thing, it will be so much easier than if you uh, put it off and put it off and put it off. It, it will make it so much harder for you. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what the results uh, and the takeaway from people who have overcome their conflict is, oh my gosh, that is so much more easier to disfuse the situation rather than avoid it and let it grow crazy out of control. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I love it. So tell me then, is there, can you see the possibility of having a broadcast? Because I am hearing from uh, from people who keep questioning me because they're hearing it from other light workers. Um, what do you say about the broadcast happening in America, for example? Oh, well, we still do see a possibility for a broadcast. And as we were kind of saying earlier with the natural disasters, um, if the military was to take control, I think that at that time there would be a broadcast or at least a big potential for a broadcast because the people are going to be really wondering what's going on. And I think uh, that by telling them some of what's really going on in the world, it could, uh, you know, um, allow a lot of people to, you know, wake up and a lot of people to uh, maybe, you know, feel a little bit more peaceful about what's going on. Must a lot of people right now just really don't understand a lot of a lot of the sleeping people really just uh, they're they're they, they really don't know and they're just living in fear and we really just want to ease a lot of that fear. And even some of the people that are awake are also living in fear because they're so uh, worried when they see all these lockdowns and everything else that's happening that they they just they're just um, almost like getting addicted to that fear and they have to keep looking at more and more and more scary things. And I mean, the the fear is everywhere. It's on the news. It's on even the, you know, awoken sites, as we would say, like, the you know, even the QAnons are spewing nonstop fear to people as well, even though they think they're trying to help by waking people up, they're actually um, keeping them just stuck in this uh, endless cycle of fear. And and uh, we feel like something drastic may have to happen, like a broadcast, just to get all these people uh, onto the same page. 
it seems like the dark isn't promoting fear anymore. It's the light workers who are stuck and have lost faith. Yes, it is. That's for sure. And they've had all this time on their hands. So they're just digging and digging and digging for everything uh, that they can find. And a lot of it is just old, um, you know, over and over again about the crimes against humanity or this or that or whatever. And they're just getting uh, too wrapped up in it. They really need to just be focusing on, you know, what's happening. But unfortunately, nothing is really happening right now. So they have too much time on their hands. So instead of uh, doing their inner work, they're digging through to find uh, more fear-based stuff to post. You would think when they start going down that hole into the rabbit, Warren, Nest, whatever the saying is, I'm so out of date with being cool and hip, I, I've completely butchered this conversation already. But when you think that, when people start seeing that there is so much hidden from us publicly, uh, that it doesn't take a huge leap to then start thinking, well, what else? And, oh, what about religion and spirituality and reincarnation and a whole lot of other stuff? You think, well, they're still scratching around trying to find all these crimes against humanity. You would think that they would stumble onto a spirituality path and maybe grow existentially that way. Yeah, you think that they would, but there are some that are stuck. Like, uh, as we're saying this, uh, Amy is thinking about her brother and her brother is, again, one who's really awoken and aware of all this stuff, but he just can't see one bit of the spirituality. So, you know, we believe he's a light worker and he's uh, doing light work, even though he's not aware of it, but he is still unwilling to uh, believe in anything. And he's just, some of these people have just lost all their hope. So they just don't even care to try anymore. And, uh, you know, that's why we really do need uh, you, you and your group um, that are just uh, spreading, taking these people's negative energy and, uh, and turning it back out into positive energy because, uh, you know, something will happen. Hopefully, that's why I say we think we need the broadcast because we do need to wake these people up to the fact that there is so much more going on and so much more spiritually that they need to be aware of. And, um, you know, if, uh, if all these people were to come to an awareness and, you know, just trust and have some faith, we could uh, get you all shifted off here a lot sooner. Mm, absolutely. And so that's the perspective from uh, Amy's higher self, who's a Palladian, is that correct? Yes. And so yeah. would the collective of the Arcturians, would they have the same perspective about the broadcast? Yes, the Arcturians are also, um, yeah, they, you know that, you know, we felt like there was a broadcast many times uh, before, but we've been, you know, things have happened to so that we didn't need it. But uh, we are coming back around to that again, and uh, all the collective groups, uh, uh, the you know, the whole Galactic Federation is feeling like uh, we really do need a broadcast, and uh, you know, we may even have to um, uh, show ourselves, uh, so to speak, to the world in order to uh, get everyone, uh, you know, back onto the right track. I just think that natural disasters and then seeing you guys appear with your hands on your hips, tapping your feet going, can we wake up now and release the fear because we want to get going? Um, I feel like natural disasters will freak out people so profoundly who are already so traumatized from past events in their past lives and in this lifetime with natural disasters. Um, it's just kind of, it must be so impossible for you to navigate what's going to serve everyone the most or the majority. Yeah, it sure is, because we don't want to bring more fear down as well, but we would like to uh, spread hope, right? And that would be the reason that we would consider, you know, an otherworldly broadcast again, but for sure, uh, uh, for sure, an earthly broadcast anyway, uh, with uh, some of the truth. But again, it's hard to wake people up too, too much too, because you know that they can go into a um, even darker hole if we tell them too much about what's going on as well. So uh, we are still mulling over exactly uh, what will happen, but we do feel like there will be a disclosure of some kind. Mm, okay, well, thank you. And we will do our best to keep ourselves in a higher vibration uh, and, and in our imaginary bubbles, washing away the fear from people that um, can actually release it now, uh, knowing that fear breeds fear. Yeah, we would just really encourage everyone we know it's really hard because it is in your faces all the time, but you just really need to 
dig deep for your inner peace and know that we have this all taken care of and that everything is an illusion that's going on around you right now. Uh, there's there's nothing that you're being shown is what's really going on. So just, uh, you know, just have faith. Just have faith in us and know that we're with you and we won't let anything happen to you. You're always protected. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that. And thank you for the confirmation and the reminder because I know a lot of people just need that little reassurance from time to time. Um, so talking about illusions, uh, I've had many sessions about this already, but tell me about the departure and exit point of Prince Philip. Well, he actually, they announced his uh, death today, but he actually was gone a long time ago. Uh, he was executed, we want to say six months, maybe even longer ago. He has been gone for a long time, but they are just using this as a point to um, show his death to the public. And uh, we actually feel that this might be spun around as a death from the vaccines. I see. And so why is it appropriate and important for them to do it now, time-wise? Well, they are trying to, in the UK, um, this is the perfect time because he had the uh, COVID vaccination in January and they are wanting to show that um, it's going to take a little bit of time uh, for the vaccines to uh, have complications for some of these people, but uh, they are, um, but it is now going to show that they're tr we're, tr we're trying to um, wake up uh, the people in the UK a little bit more. There are a lot of awake there already, but we want to, uh, we want to uh, wake them up a little more. Plus, uh, it's just kind of like easing the public into, or yeah, easing the public into the fact that uh, some of these people are now gone because we feel like the monarchs, uh, you know, because they are so loved throughout the world, even though we know that they had different agendas and did a lot of crimes against humanity, a lot of people don't know that. So it is going to um, sadden a lot of people. So we kind of wanted to, uh, uh, just have him, you know, kind of die like this in a, you know, more peaceful way than uh, if he was, if it was to be announced that he was executed. And so uh, while we accept the public uh, status and narrative, the private one was that he was executed. Can you give me a sense and a reason why he was executed? He was executed because he was uh, a reptilian and because of the crimes against humanity. Uh, him and uh, the queen were both executed as well as uh, many other members of the royal family as well. And so they, tell me about him being a reptilian. Is it uh, part of his sole family or was he a shapeshifter? I want to know more. That was his, um, that was his sole family and he came here and his mission was to try to, um, to take a position of power and uh, he managed to do that by marrying uh, the queen who he used and she didn't start off to be, uh, she didn't start off to be um, the evil, well we don't want to call her evil because she's, you know, she's come to terms with what she's done but she, he, he got her into it with him and uh, used her power and influence to uh, be able to control, you know, a good portion of, of uh, humanity uh, from the position he took. So uh, he uh, was involved with um, Hitler uh, and the Nazis. He's uh, been just kind of jumping around uh, from power group to power group. He's in many, many secret societies and uh, uh, yeah, just just uh, really became a really, really powerful man and uh, has just, you know, tried to uh, push his dark agenda uh, amongst humanity for a long time. Mm. And the agenda, there doesn't seem to be going so well now. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And they're all gone. Like, that's why we don't want you to worry. They're all, all the people, there's a few little minions left, but all the big players in this uh, dark agenda are gone. They, are, they have already all been either executed or killed some other way. And so in terms of his funeral that will be taking place, um, what would you like us to know about that? Well, it actually will be really good because uh, there are a lot of people who did uh, do love and respect him 
uh, regardless, because they don't know about all that, all the other things going on behind the scenes, but uh, there will be a really good energy um, as the people uh, send their love uh, to the royal family uh, and to the British people. So we actually see the energy of the planet being uh, being really uh, quite well that or quite going quite well that day. Interesting. Okay, thank you so much. Um, is there anything else you want us us to know about him or that family? Uh, we want you to know that even uh, he is uh, he is sorry for uh, all of the crimes that he did commit, and now that he is on the other side, he is reptilian, and they did uh, want to um, not really take over uh, humanity, but they did, you know, they did really want to uh, be able to push their agenda on humanity. And they are just that kind of creature. They, they, um, they just can't help the way that they are. They're not as evolved uh, even as you, as you uh, humans are. So they, um, they really can't help themselves. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he didn't mean to bring so much, uh, so much um, death and, darkness upon the planet. Some could say that his role was to help awaken humanity as well. Yes, it was. It was. And he he was playing his parts uh, very, very, very well. Hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you for his service. We can imagine that would be a very hard role to take. I'm sure. Did he want to jump into that life contract or was it he was reluctant to do it? Uh, he actually really wanted to jump into it. He really wanted to take on a bigger role, and he uh, he he was able to achieve all everything that he was supposed to in this lifetime. So he is actually uh, he is actually happy uh, happy that he was able to fulfill his life contract. Sorry sorry for what he had to do to do it, but he is happy. Yeah, yeah, good. He can see the bigger perspective. So can we, because we are just that evolved now and mature. We can cope with with all of these players knowing that there is no good or bad. So thank you very much for clarifying that with us. Um, I'm curious to know one question about Princess Diana. Uh, was it her plan to leave the public with that car crash in Paris or was that accident pushing her uh, before she was ready to leave uh, public view? Uh, that accident was actually, um that accident was, yeah, was faked in order for her to be able to go into hiding so that she, uh, because she knew that they were going to take her out anyway. So she had to uh, do something uh, serious in order to fake her death so that she could uh, be, be protected. I see. Okay. I was just, quand yeah, I just was pondering the other day whether uh, this was all part of her plan or something else happened to make her jump into her her um, her plan part part of her plan part of her plan it was a really well thought out plan just like uh, we can compare to uh, John F Kennedy uh, jr they uh, they both knew that they had to um, get themselves out of the public light uh, before before they were they were taken out and they're still both working. Uh, hard behind the scenes to help humanity. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, I really appreciate hearing that. And um, in terms of the country, um, India, what is happening there and why does it seem to be a lot of people getting sick from, um, from what they think is COVID or another virus? Well, India is kind of... Um, maybe almost in the same situation as Canada is, uh, uh, we can see that they, they are kind of um, almost trying to like make more COVID cases so that they can kind of continue the lockdown. And they are um, really uh, stretching. People are getting sick from uh, other things like regular, co regular colds and flus, but they're really trying to uh, push the COVID agenda. They want to... Um, uh, they need it to uh, keep the keep the lockdowns and the um, um, they have like we don't want to call them concentration camps, but sort of quarantine camps that they are uh, wanting to have um, a fair amount of people in. Could it be possible that the people who are experiencing these colds or flus are actually just having ascension symptoms? Yes, yes, and lots of upgrades as well. So we want you to know, like we would always tell you that whenever there is a cold or a flu, 
or even in Amy's case, it's often headaches because we don't want to give her a cold and flu because she would have to be off work. Uh, and there are many other people in the same situation. So they are having other kinds of symptoms, but yes, they can be ascension symptoms or upgrades. We are giving lots of upgrades right now because we are really trying hard to uh, get everyone to the level that they need to be at to shift. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much. And a question about New Earth. When people get to New Earth, uh, will their connection with their subconscious and higher self be any different from what it is now? Yes, we think your connection will be much stronger and you'll be able to uh, tap into uh, both the subconscious and the higher self a lot easier than you can here. Uh, lots of people here have a hard time and they have to do like, uh, say one of your sessions or um, a deep, deep meditation in order to connect up. But uh, over there it will be uh, really almost an instantaneous, uh, uh, you will almost be able to connect instantaneous. Anytime you want, it will just be there. They will be there at their fingertips to help you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And in terms of, um, oh, goodness, I'm trying to think what I'm up to. In terms of, um, let me think about the next question. In terms of the Akashic records, uh, people have been told that there is an, a, a a uh, library or some physical or non-physical uh, place that has all the histories of everyone's life contracts and experiences this lifetime and all the other lifetimes I've ever lived. Is that still relevant information or has something changed? Something has actually changed. So it is relevant information for some people, but it isn't relevant information for all people, if that makes sense, because there are people who were supposed to have shifted already and they're still here. So they're actually onto uh, an extended contract, which they have um, signed with their uh, higher self, but you would not, uh, we would not always be aware of all of that. So uh, the people who are going to stay here on the old earth, their contracts would still remain the same in the Akashic records, but a lot of people's uh, records have and are always uh, like still changing on a daily basis so it's uh it's not always it's not as accurate as it was before the past the past life information would still be uh very relevant but the uh current life uh information might may not be accurate as, as accurate as it was mm -hmm. okay and the location of this place that has all these records is that always the same has it always been the same and will that always be the same yes and so is that the information just for this planet or all planets? It's more information for this planet. There is a bit of information from other planets, but it is really more accurate for this planet. There are a lot of people who haven't had lives here previously that may not have a lot of information in the Akashic record. A lot of the information that you might get if you, if you say did a, a session or uh, Amy or any, any other ones of the any other of the volunteers did one, they might not get uh, a lot of information out of the Akashic records. It might be just current stuff uh, that they're going through right now. Oh, so interesting. Thank you. And is it true that all of the information, uh, all of the, the experiences we've had in our lives, emotionally and physically, are all somehow the information is locked into our DNA and in our bones? Yes. Yes, that's definitely true. All, all, all of your information is um, is in your is in your DNA, which and in your bones. So you will, uh, it will be really easy for your uh, for you to uh, recall it all once uh, once the veil is lifted. I see. And so, if I had a traumatic physical event, an emotional event, and then I had a child, would that child then also get that information from my DNA or my trauma physically and emotionally? Yes, we see. Yes, and not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, yes. So intriguing. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. In Amy's case, that is true. I think we've said it in a previous session, but I think it was uh, one that was private. But uh, she has passed a lot of her trauma along to her son, especially her firstborn. Ah, 
Oh, okay. And I'm assuming that the subconscious and higher self allowed all of that transfer because that's a part of the contract of being uh, from that yes. person. Yes, yes, it, it is all purposeful. Uh, they they had already contracted to do this before before they came down here. Is that on purpose so they can uh, view each other in the life similarly, or is it for them to? Uh, um, you know, what is the what is the positive experience for having the same trauma? Yes, it's well, it's so that they can understand each other uh, profoundly, like no one else could, and that they can kind of both go through some of the same lessons, so that they can be there to support and guide each other through them. So they are able to uh, easily understand uh, what the other one has gone through. And it's kind of like uh, putting, being able to put them, them each in their other shoes and uh, come from a different point of compassion and understanding and uh, forgiveness, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's allowing them to have a connection that they wouldn't be able to have otherwise. That makes complete sense. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we just want to say, because we know it's really hard and Amy has really been struggling uh, with this, uh, just because it is such a hard lesson for both of them that they've had to go through. But again, all purposeful, and we want her to know that everything is playing out the way that it is supposed to. Well, that's great confirmation. Thank you so much. Amy was also wondering uh, when she heard from the session from Lincoln, and uh, when he told us to use our voices and not be afraid to speak out the truth, she was wondering uh, what would she and should she use her voice for? What is her truth? Yeah, she's just, um, we just want her to be able to stand up for herself a little bit more and um, empower herself a bit more. And uh, just really, um, uh, yeah, do not waver from what she believes in. Uh, she's been um, kind of having some, not days where she didn't have faith, but not as much faith as she's had at other times. And we really uh, want her to get back to that place. And we are there. Uh, supporting her and we want to remind her she hasn't been uh, connecting up with us as much as uh, she has at times and uh, this is awesome today that we're able to have this connection with her because we're able to uh, really connect with her profoundly and she's going to feel like she gets that all back and we've seen her empowering herself and we just want her to push herself a little bit further and uh, you know stand up it's something to do with her family all in general uh, she really needs to um, have some conversations with them that might not be easy, but get a lot of things off of her chest and uh, come to a point of forgiveness on both sides so that they can, uh, this is inner work for them and we really want them to um, get this uh, lingering conflict that's been there for years and years and years out of the way. Ah, well, we will send them all so much love and open hearts and compassion for each other while they can listen and hear each other while still respecting each other profoundly. Yes, and I think they're at the perfect place now. There's a reason that this hasn't happened until now. Uh, they're all ready to actually listen to each other with open minds and open hearts now. So, uh, and this, and she just, uh, the continued situation with her son, uh, we just want them both to move forward to a place where they can both uh, heal. and we are putting people into their path to try to help them with that as well. Nice. So facing the conflict will always be the better option. Yes, that's the lesson we are really trying to uh, send out to everyone right now is um, we know lots of people have things that they've kind of put off uh, dealing with, but now is the time, seize the day. <laughs> yeah, get into that emotional closet and do some spring cleaning. Absolutely, love it. Um, and then the one question that I have, which seems to mm, make me curious, uh, I've been told that I'm supposed to be writing a book for the old earth. Is that what you would consider something I should be focusing on? Well, you know that you've heard this before, <laughs> that this keeps coming up for you. So yes, we feel like if you uh, could sit down and write a book for the new or for the older, sorry, it would be uh, something that they could really uh, use as a tool uh, when they're stuck here without all the high, high, high vibrational people that they have now, because they are going to be feeling a real depletion of uh, energy on the planet, and they're going to be scared, and they're going to be uh, wondering what happened to all the other people. So 
uh, we really do feel like your book could give uh, a lot of these people some uh, peace and some clarity uh, with uh, regards to what has actually uh, transpired. I'm just curious how people will be able to buy and source the book uh, after the shift. Well, we feel like uh, we can uh, help out a little bit with that and uh, we could uh, just make sure that there are uh, copies uh, in existence that are around for the right people to find. Oh, I see. Okay. So it needs to be a physical printed book, not just a little memo and a sticky note somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we would say a physical printed book or even uh, an online book uh, that some people could print out if they if they so desired, because you know everything is digital nowadays and we feel like uh, they will still have internet uh, on the old earth for a while anyway. Oh, wow. Really? Will they? Yes, yes. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any suggestion for the title of the book, apart from some cheeky suggestions that I have in my mind? <laughs> um, we think you'll come up with the right title. <laughs> we want to say something like really cheesy, like a, a, like a new hope or something, but that might be a title from a Star Wars movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, when people are on the old earth, is there new hope? Or is it just buckle up, people, this is going to be a tough ride? I think there still could be hope for them. They still could, um, if they were still able to uh, get into the spiritual the spiritual side and connect up with their uh, higher self and that they could still have the peace of knowing, uh, you know, what their contract is and that uh, seeing the bigger picture and seeing the bigger perspective and uh, seeing that there is a purpose because they are all here for a reason as well. And if if they could uh, see that and kind of um, open up to that fact, plus the uh, fact that, you know, this isn't the end of life for them, that there are many, many other lifetimes for them coming in the future, and that uh, there will be uh, an end to this too. I think they could find a lot of comfort in uh, knowing the truth at that point, uh, some of the people anyway. Mm, good point. I also know that there's going to be some practitioners who are still staying on the old earth. You would think that they would be able to tap in using uh, this technique to be able to get the information to and be able to share that because there are some big influences that will still be here. Yes, there sure will. And there, there are a lot of people who are staying uh, just to help humanity, right? So they will be here as well. And we want to give them as much peace as, uh, and comfort as we can can as well. So some of them may enjoy uh, reading your book as well. And there will be uh, practitioners still doing sessions and there will still be uh, other other light workers uh, and other people uh, relaying some good information. We also see that the religious, um, a lot of the religious groups that are left will, uh, a lot of people will, will turn to religion. So in a sense that is, uh, it's not, you know, spirituality as you guys know it, but it still will give them uh, some kind of uh, faith and, uh, you know, kind of something to believe in to keep them, um, keep them in hope through those uh, last days of the earth. Mm, absolutely, indeed. Okay, well, thank you so much. I will um, stop procrastinating then and figure out a way how this will unfold. Um, because part of my fear now is if I don't write this book, we'll never freaking shift. So I, I don't want to be responsible for holding everyone up. Well, I think, uh, you know, Amy's kind of been feeling like uh, she's been holding people up to by neglecting some of her inner work. So, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people, a lot of uh, you out there in, that are kind of feeling this way. And that's kind of a feeling that we're really just wanting uh, you guys to get motivated so we're uh you know kind of putting everything uh right there for you so that you know that if you can just get through these uh last little things that we're asking you to do that everything that you wanted is right there <laughs> <laughs> yes okay thank you so much really appreciate that and we'll, we'll... We're, we're we're kind of trying we're trying to give you like a big we're trying to give you all like a kind of a gentle but a little bit of a, a harder shove <laughs> Not quite a smack bottom, but sort of. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting, we're getting there. We're still giving, we're, we're still, uh, we're still just kind of gently nudging. 
Fantastic. Okay, thank you. I will ponder how I will approach this. So uh, much appreciation and love as always for all the information you've provided us. And thank you so much, Amy's higher self. It's always a blast chatting to you. It feels like talking to an old friend. We, we are old friends and we, uh, we always love talking to you as well. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You little sweet. You're very welcome. Uh, stop mucking around with the, the energy, by the way, too. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I guess it, 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 you will get a few you will get a few high vibrational days now before we change it again <laughs> uh, well we forgive you uh, we understand and we understand it's all purposeful I just wanted to be cheeky back okay much love you. <laughs>